Farmer Fern here with an easy how-to for you on how to get creative with trellising in your garden this season. This video is part of a gardening tutorial mini-series in partnership with Boundless Landscapes and the Boulder Li Public Library, and it's generously sponsored by the Boulder Library Foundation. All right, let's get started by talking about real estate, garden real estate that is. You know, whether your garden is on a uh, balcony and patio pots or in a large in-ground plot like this one, trellising your garden plants is a great way to maximize the amount of space that you have to grow in in your garden. Uh, whether it's with your indeterminate tomatoes, your cucumbers, your pole beans, or your peas, um, it's a great way to maximize your square footage, increase yields, help your plants reach up into sunlight, uh, you know, prevent diseases, and uh, you know, make harvesting a little bit of an easier, less back-breaking back task. And so this video will go over a few ways that you can trellis those plants around your garden. So let's talk about what likes to be trellised in the first place. Um, in our pruning tomato 101 video, we went over indeterminate versus toma determinate tomato varieties. Um, and you should know that indeterminate varieties are the ones that really like to be trellised and really need it. Um, but they aren't alone, you know, cucumbers, melons, vining squash like delicata squash, um, peas, pole beans, all of these things respond really well to being trellised. Plus it makes them a lot easier to harvest because you're not having to bend over and search for them throughout your garden. So when determining what you're going to need for trellising, it's really important to not only think about what varieties of plants that you're going to be, you know, planting in your garden that season, but also the actual layout of your garden. I'm facing south right now, and what you'll see behind me is that all of our uh, garden beds are oriented north-south, so that throughout the day our plants aren't shading one another out, and their trellises aren't shading one another out. You know, I wouldn't want to put a giant metal trellis in the center of this bed, which would then block out sun throughout the day for everyone else. So you really want to think about that and kind of keeping your trellises along the edges. What I have here, if you can see it all right, is our cucumbers are vining up our galvanized metal livestock fence there. You know, we wouldn't want to use a simple structure like this little bamboo one we have here for something like cucumbers or squash because they're really, really heavy, right? And so those structures can actually fall underneath the weight of them. So utilizing your fence, if you have one around your garden, is a great way to get your cucumbers up and out of the way so they're not crawling over your entire garden, while also, you know, making it easy for harvest. We can walk around the outside of this fence then and just pull our uh, cucumbers through them. So let's use this farm as an example. What we have back here along that cucumber side is, you know, all the way in the back here, we have our squash growing there and our cucumbers and calendula right there. And then what we have here are a row of indeterminate tomatoes that are on a Florida weave trellis system, which I'll explain in a little bit. And then we have some succession plantings of bush beans, some more tomatoes, and then a native and perennial berm. And so let's talk about the logic with how I would trellis all of these plants. So vining cucumbers, they'll trellis on almost anything, right? So it's great that we have them over there on that steel livestock fence. I will mention that our steel livestock fence is coated in vinyl because otherwise metal gets pretty hot throughout the day and you don't really want to be burning your fingertips as you're going into harvest. Now for lightweight crops like uh, beans and peas, um, they can grow on cone structures like this one that I just quickly MacGyvered out of some bamboo and twine that I had. What you would go ahead and do is just plant your beans or your peas down around the base of it um, and then, you know, those plants will naturally climb right up this. One of my favorite structures I saw, which really was both utilitarian from a trellising perspective, but also a beautiful tall structure to have in the garden was um, a cone shape like this made out of basketry willow and it was just stunning. And you know some other fun things I've seen are people getting creative with using ski poles or even old skis and uh, one of my favorites also was someone had an old cast iron bed that they just you know put the bed frame in the middle of their garden and everything vined over the top of it. Um, which was great because then their vines were up in the air and they could plant down around the base of those vines other small plants like radishes or even, you know, baby greens or something like that. So play with it, you know, your garden trellises, they don't have to just be utilitarian. They can also be a beautiful structure in the middle of your garden that really increases curb appeal and draws people into the garden. 
All right, so let's talk about tomatoes because I think there's a lot of ways to go about trellising them and people tend to have a lot of confusions about what's the best way. Let's start with if you have a few tomato plants, you know, maybe up to like six or so. And so if that's the case, I would definitely recommend going the route of tomato cages. Now, a really important thing to note is, you know, um, indeterminate tomatoes, they can easily grow up to six feet tall here in Boulder. And so you're going to want to be looking for a cage that's 60 inches or higher. I mean, it's even preferred if it's something like 72 inches. I see a lot of stores selling, you know, these like 42 inch tall tomato cages. And really, that's not going to uh, cut it for if you have, you know, a really strong growing indeterminate tomato that season. So they, I also want to mention that besides those traditional round tomato cages that I think we've all seen that, you know, they can be a bit of a pain to store in the winter time if you're short on garage space like I am. And so I recommend buying actually the rectangular ones that they sell because they collapse down and they store flat throughout the winter time, which I think is just great. All right, and lastly, I wanna to talk to you about something called the Florida Weave Method, which is great if you have a large amount of tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, peas, or pole beans to be trellising. And so basically the premise of this is that you have two really strong end posts, five to eight feet apart. Now those could be T posts, you know, some people have even done, um, you know, ski poles, which was really cute. Um, and then you're going to weave string between those two poles while sandwiching whatever plant you're trellising in between it. And so here we have it done with our indeterminate tomatoes. And what you'll see is we have a T post, let's see, right there. And then we have a T post right back here and we position ours eight feet apart. And then we have strung twine in between those to sandwich either side of the tomato main stem. And that motion keeps those tomato main stems um, you know, tightly tucked in between, um, sandwiched on both sides, and then help, helps them grow upwards. Um, if for peas and beans though, it's not as important to sandwich them between the twine as it is to go ahead and just give them, you know, a nice ladder to climb up maybe every three inches or so. At first you might have to train the peas and beans a little bit to just latch onto the strings, but once they know it's there, they'll go vertically right up your whole structure. So you know to recap, trellising is a great way to get certain varieties of plants like indeterminate tomatoes, cucumbers, delicata squash, certain heirloom zucchinis, pole beans, snow peas, uh, sugar snap peas, shelling peas, getting, you know, even sweet potatoes, um, getting their greens up off of the ground so they're not crawling and sprawling and taking over your whole garden so that you can plant again at the base of them while helping them get up into the sunlight and, uh, you know, easing your harvest and getting airflow around the plants. And there's so many different ways to go about the trellising. Really, I just want you to get creative with what you do. You know, I promise you, you won't fail too bad if you give it a shot this year. Um, and you know, use what you have around. Maybe it's scrap metal. Maybe you took down an old fence and you've got some T-posts. Go ahead and get creative and use those.